Anyway, this is going to be next game, Daniil Kalina and Vanasha, which is probably going to be in the Small Supreme Islands. So we're going to see Sea Play, though apparently hovers are fairly, are fairly popular. I mean, when I was playing against Polar a bit, just to get back in here, I played C, Polar played Hover, and ended up winning because Polar didn't know what exactly to do, and I kept my Crusaders and Excaliburs alive. We'll see what these two do here. Apparently Hover is popular, so that's likely what we're going to see. Assuming it is that map and not Conquest of Paradise or some other map. Because Conquest of Paradise was actually the loser's bracket round one map, not the main round two map. Regardless, Daniel Kalina still won. And now against Vanusha, we're going to have... Hey, no, no, just... Okay, so I'm just looking for where... Once I find where everything is... Ah, here we go. There we go. Found it. Alright, so we're going to have the game starting up in just a moment. So we're just going to get that going in a moment. <sighs> Once that's ready, I, mean, I guess I'll just wait for an I'll. Oh no, wait, is it starting? Should I go to intermission or what? I don't know if I should go to intermission. It looks like it might very well be starting. Yes, it is. No, it's not starting. It's almost starting. Almost starting. Well, anyway, once that's started. Then we can get this game going. Okay, there we go. The start has... Okay, well, the game will start soon enough, I guess. So Vanusha, I haven't yet had a chance to see. I have seen Daniil. Daniil played pretty well last game. I still think it was a really even game between Jin and Daniil, but yeah, Daniil did win that. Won a fair and square. Jin did not move out when Jin should have moved out. And Daniil took advantage of that. It's perfect play. Perfectly good play. So we're going to go from there to... Well, like I said, the game, which is starting up pretty much right now. Daniil clean over the southwest side of the map. And it looks like going to have Vonershot on the northeast side of the map. So yeah, like I said, this is very, very sea-focused. Lots of water. That's how the map goes. Lots of water. And Daniel Kalina has decided to go pretty close to the shore. As, actually, even more so has Vanershaw. So we're seeing quite a lot of that now. I'm just going to double check one thing. Ah, my docking settings were just a stupid thing. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, Vanershaw as well. Over in the north. So Vanershaw is going to be building up. See, so it looks like metal, metal, energy. So... Looks like three and... Why are they building a metal... Oh, there's a metal hub spot there. Okay. Looks like four and three, roughly, whereas Daniel Kalina is going... What is Daniel Kalina going for? Why am I on the line of sight of you? Daniel Kalina is going for... Five, two, and then C factory. So Daniel is going for a navy early on. While on the other hand... Oh, navy for both players. So both players are going navy. My mention of hovercraft was completely wrong. Apparently, Polar misinformed me, or at least that was Polar style, not a general style. Regardless, we're going to see sea. Lots and lots and lots of ships. Well, okay, not lots and lots of ships. They're very expensive and take a while to build, and you need to be very careful to make sure they don't die. But we're going to be seeing ships. Some amount of ships. Some non-zero amount of ships. And once that's up, then we will have... One or more ships fighting against one or more ships, or possibly zero or more ships, because it may be that all the ships for one player die. But yeah, Daniil starting up that that factory is starting up. Nothing has been built for it yet. Nothing has actually been set up for it. Round Daniil has eleven metal, actually very strong, five metal spots. While on the other hand, we have here Vanisha with eight metal, four metal spots being built up, and kind of being slow about building that actually. A little bit surprising. I'm not sure why that happened. I think... I don't think there's much of a tur turn rate. 
I'm not sure why it was laid out that way, because neither player is actually stalling. Neither player is stalling, but for whatever reason, this is not working out. Actually, oh wow. A lot of tidal generators, but the factory is coming in quite late. So we do see a bit of an energy boom strategy coming in from from Vanisha. Well, Daniil is just setting up an early, well, early Excalibur as well. Whew, that could win the game. I'm not kidding. That could actually win the game outright. Excaliburs are fairly strong. The only advantage, or the only saving grace, I suppose, that exists for Vanisha is they kind of hid behind this mountain here. Kind of. I think there's still line of sight from the water. If we were to go here... Yeah, there's still line of sight from the water. I don't know if it's within destroyer range, though. Because destroyers are... Destroyers have a decent range. Let's see. Yeah, it's within destroyer range. So the destroyer could very easily hit the tower. It's not likely to actually do so because the tower can still fight back. But there's nothing here, and destroyers are strong enough. So, sorry, Excalibur, two Excaliburs, one Crusader, and a construction sub. See, Excaliburs are definitely strong enough. I call them destroyers, but really, they're not the only destroyer class unit here. Excaliburs and Crusaders are both destroyers. However, I believe Excaliburs are a bit more anti-unit. Not totally sure, though. And I, I can't check. Because I can shift-click on this guy. Okay. Actually, I can't really tell. Not really sure offhand which one's more anti-unit, which one's more anti-building, if that is the separation. But I can tell that Daniel Kalina has... Well, actually, a metal... It's actually falling behind on metal. Well, on the other hand, Vanershaw is... Okay, they have gone for that factory pretty early on. Vanershaw going for pretty quick Crusaders. Now, this factory has 20 seconds left before it's done, and the Excalibur is... Oh! The Excalibur's not even being worked on. In fact, that entire rush timing has been shot down the drain. Because, apparently... Well, that metal stall. Daniel Kalina had... Oh, darn it. Don't want to do that at all. Ah... Uh... Sorry, that really should not happen. Well, I fixed this before. I know it's possible. Damn it. <sighs> Sorry about this. Okay, there we go. That fixed it. Yeah, it's this is designed for 0k, and in 0k it actually interacts with the build menu, but Nauta uses a different build menu, so Nauta, closing of Nauta Factories does not make that big black block go away. Sorry about that. Like I said, I'm kind of trying to make do. Anyway, the Excalibur coming in here, so that's finally done, but that's actually being done... Oh, the Crusader's still got two minutes left, so it is quite possible for Daniil to come in with his Excalibur, and it looks like the Excalibur is being pushed forward, and if Daniil does come in with that... Oh yeah, that's totally possible. The Excalibur, that needs to move in. That needs to just tear apart the shipyard, and Daniil will take the game without any issue. But there's only about a minute and a half left. Vanishad does have that up. I mean, the factory's up. The Crusader's still got a minute and a half before it's done. And this destroyer can... Sorry, the Excalibur here can get there in time. Now, Daniil just needs to commit to an attack. Actually, not even that strongly. Just needs to go into attack. Not going that directly, though. Now, right now, because we have radar... Okay, Daniil does see the shipyard factory on radar. On the destroyer's radar. Because every ship unit is modal, mobile, radar, and sonar. Not modal, mobile. It's not a mode thing. And yes, an attack is being executed. She needs to broadside that shipyard factory, or that shipyard. Broadside the shipyard and smack it up, and that will probably give Daniil the game. Or very nearly so. Yeah, very strong attack. Opening up there, and Shipyard, however, is actually stronger. It looks like the stronger than the other factories. Because the other factories we saw earlier were basically going down pretty much like paper, whereas the Shipyard, probably because of the fact that ships are very powerful units, is taking a lot more damage before it goes down. I mean, it's only... It's got 7,000 health. I think the other factories are somewhere around one or 2,000. I'd have to double-check, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in that range. Actually, I can double-check because I can look here. Yeah, 2,000 for vehicle factories. 2,000 for most of the factories. So the shipyard is about three times as tough as pretty much every other factory. And why the Excalibur is going away when the shipyard is very nearly destroyed, I don't know. I guess to regroup. No damage has been dealt yet. But I'm guessing Daniil wants to go back, regroup, deal with this Crusader once it's done, and then basically destroy the factory afterwards. 
I let this Crusader finish, let it come out, tear it to shreds. I mean, Excalibur is weaker. Point that out. Excalibur is cheaper, but weaker. Two Excalibur should be able to beat a Crusader if they're microed properly. If, as long as Daniil makes sure that the weak Excalibur, whatever Excalibur gets damaged first, stays out of the way, and none, neither of the Excaliburs actually die, that should be a victory for Daniil. However, if not, then the Crusader will be able to get ahead, and there's three Crusaders coming in here before a bl Wow. Blaster and a Railgun Cruiser already? Okay, I really am not sure what... Especially given that Vonnershot... Vonnershot has 13 metal, and has had that for a while, was focused on very heavily on these title generators. Daniil, on the other hand, has 25 metal. Doesn't even have a constructor yet. Just focused on everything around their base, while... I don't know, Vonnershot... Like, they didn't have a lot of metal spots in range of their opening tower position. They have a lot of power, but they don't have much metal. 13 metal compared to Daniil's 25. Daniil has a massive economic advantage, currently has about military parity, but that won't last long. It's going to be military advantage fairly soon as well. And it looks like... Is that a fusion plant? No, a geothermal plant. Yeah, at this point, Daniil is very much ahead. Vonnershot is... I'm not sure what Vonnershot's trying to do. But Daniil, we have the sea combat coming in here. And Vonnershot, I think, does not have line of sight. No, didn't have line of sight, had radar only, so it's a bit of radar wobble. Ooh, perfect hit. Hit that hit that Excalibur very hard. Now, Daniil needs to get around here, trying to avoid getting hit, and trying to get into range. But Crusader does have a longer range. Actually, is the range displayed in here? Not sure. Well, it's displayed on here, at least. Yeah, the longest range is about 1,500 compared to the longest range of about 900? Wow. Yeah, Crusaders have a massive range advantage on Destroyer, on, sorry, on Excaliburs. But that being said, there's a massive numbers advantage, and with the Crusader on Daniil's side, it's not going to be long before Daniil basically pushes everything back, and it's still going to be 30 seconds before the second Crusader comes in. If that, we still see Vinershot as very much behind 16 metal, Daniil up to 25, still very much ahead. Right. Daniil is doing wonderfully here, while Vanisha is, like I said, very much so falling behind. But that might... Uh, that might do it. We'll see. And we have the construction sub finally coming in here. Do with that being built up. And then from there, a blotter once again. Getting rid of radar. Like masking for radar and such. But yeah, that second crusader just now getting done. And that first crusader is very nearly destroyed. The Excaliburs having had a chance to get near it. And is it going to go down? It's it's pretty much going to go down. Yeah, it's done. That's done. That Crusader is out. This this Excalibur needs to get back home. That one needs to retreat hard. It should, definitely should not be up front, but it is, and it's going to die. It's, that's going to be Reclaim Fodder right there. It's very, very nearly gone, and that Torpedo, I think, is going to finish it off. Yep. Still, Crusader has gone down. At this point, Daniil is the only one with the Navy. As the Crusader has just now gone down. Daniil is the only person here with the Navy. Which means that shipyard's dead. And then everything else is dead. And the tower is dead. If we don't see a GG, I don't know. Yeah, changing off to KY Factory. Vanishot, actually, that's a KY Factory for Daniil. Yeah, right here. Vanishot, on the other hand, getting. <laughs> Getting some static defense. I, what the heck is this thing? Okay, well, getting a perforator. Not sure what that is exactly, but it... Ah, here we are. Coastal defense gun. Okay. It's probably a higher range type of defense. Yeah, very high range type of defense, actually. Wow. Hugely high range. And a construction sub coming in here just to reclaim, because why not? Daniel Kalita doesn't have enough of an economic advantage with 10 metal up. Going like one and a half times the metal. Why not just reclaim all this stuff, too, and get easily twice the metal while smashing the factory to pieces and getting rid of the coastal defense as well before it's even anywhere near done. Yeah, that's not going to work out too well. Now down goes the metal extractor, and down goes the penetrator just afterwards. And yeah, is that plotter? No, it's just Excalibur. The blotter has been completely eliminated. No factories for Vanisha anymore, and a hovercraft fa- is that- no, that's an air factory of some sort. No, not even an air factory. It's a Skybus factory. It's got its own factory. Transports have their own factory. So a Skybus factory been built up. Cable factory as well. Just why not build the entire thing? 
build around, and then transport the Zeus's into Vinoshaw's base if necessary. Which, it actually looks like it might be. I guess there isn't any easy way for this particular tower to be attacked. So Zeus is going to be coming in instead, and a Hovercraft factory being built up. Vinoshaw going for Hovercrafts, going for just standard Hover Tank here. Ah, cannot get information when they're in construction mode. Yeah, this this is blockaded very strongly. And a blotter coming in because why not? Although you can't actually see... Ah, too, shoot, you can't see what the blotter actually does because it looks like there's no radar. Yeah, the blotter has some jamming around itself. Not a huge amount. The red area is jamming. But it doesn't even matter because at this point, Vandershot doesn't have any radar. And... Oh man, that's just... Construction sub from Daniel Kalina just grabbing everything outside of Vonish out of Vonish's territory, right under Vonish's nose. The tower could have taken it too, but it isn't. The tower can't take anything more, mind you. It is out of range. But that factory could have been reclaimed. And one of these anacondas is up. Okay, 49 damage a second. Fairly high alpha, low damage. Not sure about the speed, though. Still, that's just... Yeah, no easy way to get back in here for Vanusha. Honestly, I think air would almost be a better idea. Although, to be fair, I think these actually have fairly strong anti-air as well. Yeah, the flak cannons are there. But hovercraft, I don't know. I mean, the one advantage of the hovercraft is that they are cheaper. So at least with the hovercraft, it's pretty easy to get a large army and weave around all these destroyers. But even then, another Excalibur has been built, more Excaliburs are being built up, and Daniil has basically doubled the economy. Basically has double Vinoshaw's economy. And, oh, actually, it's not doing too badly. These have some sort of shield when not attacking? No, they don't. No, they certainly do not. That was just glancing blows. So yeah, that's kind of the disadvantage, is <laughs> most definitely is range. But against this many ships, I am not really sure what can be done. At this point, Vanusha has basically lost the game. This is still winner's bracket, mind you, so Vanusha still has another chance to get back in the tournament. But yeah, Vanusha kind of lost a lot. Going for Skirmisher Hovers instead, trying to beat the range advantage. Now, admittedly, with this, this is 312 range. Not really a Skirmisher advantage. That's, no. I was light hypertech, never mind. Not even going for that. This would be what to go for. Samurai here. Artillery or... Yeah, probably the artillery hovercraft would be the best option. At least at least it matches range for range. And beyond that, the light hovercraft being pushed in would just run interference and stop the ships from attacking the artillery hovercraft, or the ships would focus on artillery, and then the light hovercrafts could run in and start dealing damage. Not happening, though. Radar is, however, being built. But that ECM... Where's that ECM ship? It is over here. Yeah, we have a blotter. It looks remarkably similar to an Excalibur. Huh. They look identical, in fact, except for this one having this radar tower at the top, and the Excalibur here having a bunch of guns. That's really the only difference. Kind of hard to notice at a long distance. But anyway, the Excalibur and blotter. So the blotter here, we do see from Daniel Kalina's point of view, is blocking everything else. So right now, there is no way for... Yeah, where is it? Yeah, even though it shows up here, I'm not looking at the specific vision for... for Vanusha. But Vanusha can't see these. So if... Daniel Kalina just needs to go in for essentially the kill, getting an air factory as well, yeah, there's really not much can be done here. That sky bus has been built up. There, okay, it's being built up. 22 seconds left. Taking a while, but once that's done... Oh, more sky bus. Never mind. So, four sky bus have been built. They are loaded with one Zeus each. Oh, there we go. Figure there's more than one Zeus each. Loading up with Zeus, getting as many Zeus as they can. Just going that final attack. And Hovercraft attack- oh, Anaconda's going over to the north, avoiding all the ships. The blockade was not complete. And the ships here revealing themselves. Scalibur and Crusader moving back. The blood are not revealing itself, but kind of revealing itself by the fact that some radar dots just popped out of nowhere. Bit suspicious, that is. And it looks like some laser towers being built up just in case. Probably expecting a ground assault or something. 
and an air factory has been built up. Actually, two air factories have been built up. So Vondershot is going very heavily for air, which is, like I said, kind of what I expected to be the thing to do. Now, at this point, there are four Skybuses and not sure how many Zeus. Three Zeus on the ground, an indeterminate number being currently held in the Skybuses. Because that needs to be dealt with. And, uh, what the... Oh, level two constructor. Oh, we actually, there we go. Finally, we see a level two constructor. It's for defense. But yeah, there we're finally seeing a level two constructor. Yeah, went for defense tech. Interesting. Level surprise went that Daniil went for defense tech of all things, given that Daniil is really on the advantage here. Didn't go for Kbot tech or I guess there was there isn't any navy tech, but yeah, that's just really surprising. Although at this point, that does mean that the shipyard, I think, can build the Sea Dragon. Not sure why it would be built yet, but it could in theory. And looks like okay, Daniel Kalina has 44 metal. Vanner Shot's 22 metal. Vanner Shot's starting to rebuild a bit, but even then, getting a perforator up, her couple perforators up. This Excalibur doesn't have much to hit. But despite that. Honestly, it's just when these sky buses drop in, once they drop in with all these Zeus, that's game. Okay, so apparently Tech 2 is required for the specific K ball thing, so yeah, that's. Really kind of surprised that. Because yeah, Defense Tech is up, but not much else. Doesn't really matter though, like I said, it's just a matter of time, just a matter of when all these Zeus get pushed in. Now, right now, Daniil is. What the? Oh, I can't follow cursor in Nada. Damn. Okay. Well, doesn't matter then. Daniil is going to be. Well, it has a perforator up here. That perforator actually, I think, does have line of sight. Sorry, not Daniil. Vanisha. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that perforator will have line of sight. Doesn't really matter though. Like I said, it's just a matter of when Daniil finally decides to send in these Zeus. Actually, a few Hellkites coming up as well. And here we have a tab of... Oh, what the... Oh. Yep, we have artillery. Long range artillery, and it's probably accurate enough to actually hit the tower here. Wow. Yeah, it's very likely to hit that tower. So we have long range artillery coming from Daniil for some reason. 20 minutes in the game. It'll take another 20 minutes before it's done with these constructors right now. The energy cost is way too high. Needs to build a few more power plants before that's going to be feasible. Probably what's going to end up happening though is basically... Well, we have an air assault, air assault coming in here with the peepers just to see what's going on. See what can be done. And the Zeus are likely to come in afterwards once they know the most opportune points to attack. Now that Daniil has perfect knowledge of exactly what's going on inside of Vanishas base, knows everything that's going on in here. Losing the peepers, but that's fine. They've done their job. And it looks like from here it's going to be yeah, more Freedom Fighters coming up as well, just in case. In case they get attacked. And the top of that's still taking a while. I'm guessing that... Oh no, actually, is that... Is this a missile silo? No, it's just a cannon. Okay, it just happens to have required that you build the cannon shells first. So yeah, there's a lot... I mean, Fusion... Fusion plant being built here for... Daniel... No additional metal, though. No, actually, a lot of metal on the ground. Daniil has taken a lot of metal in the sea. But that's... Oops. Didn't want to do that. A lot of metal has been taken in the sea. I can't really see the metal view for some reason. And this is why I wasn't sure about air, because the flat cannon. But the flat cannon is still doing a decent job. The penetrator is up, and it is forcing the Crusader and Excalibur back, and it's... It's very much forcing them back. And the flak isn't doing... I mean, there's, it would be possible with enough air units to get through that flak. And a shipyard being rebuilt as well, so... Ya Vanusha getting back that shipyard... While... Shipyard's still up here, and we are in fact seeing... Tycho, that is... Not the most powerful thing. Anti-air cruiser, so... Dedicated anti-air... A little bit surprised about that. Don't think it's really necessary. I think there's probably enough freedom fighters to deal with that. But yeah, just in case, get a dedicated anti-air just to get rid of all these air units. Just managed to get rid of one of the toadfoots. 
Gets rid of one of the Toadfoots. But they are doing a decent amount of damage to the ships. But yeah, they are not lasting long. That's the one thing. These very powerful anti-air. The thing with ships is that they are pretty much all-purpose mobile we weapons platforms. All of them. So it is tough to counter. They're not quite generalist, but they are close. With enough air units, it will work. But it, yeah, at the same time, there is an anti-air coming in. The is coming in. And we do have Moho Mine as well, because why not? Build some Moho Mines, get more metal. And Skybus coming in on top of that. Skybus have not yet come in, though. They're still loading up. One of them actually load up quite a bit. I really kind of wish I could see how many units were loaded up here. Because I don't know how many units were loaded up here. My guess is somewhere in the 40s or 50s, but I have no idea. And on the other hand, Daniil... What is... Well, on the other hand, we have Vanusha going for a level 2 constructor on defense as well, but that makes much more sense for Vanusha to go for the defensive constructor. Whereas we have here... Because this... I mean, maybe because this is considered defense. The Tabitha and... Oh, Retaliator. Nukes. Yeah, because the Tabitha is considered defense, maybe that's necessary? I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it might very well be. Okay, that's good to know. So that was the point of the defense constructor. And more fusion reactors being built just to try to deal with the energy needs of building up this Tabitha within 10 minutes. I mean, I really hope that Daniil isn't trying to actually win with it. And it's just there as a trump card, you know, in case the sky bus attack doesn't work. Or in case these area assaults don't work. I mean, the Freedom Farm is coming here trying to get rid of the Toadfoots, but there's no Toadfoots for... No, no Toadfoots at all for Daniil. Purely Freedom Fighter. And the Tycho as well, and more Zeus coming up. Well, Tofut's coming in from two factories from Vanishad. It's the second game where Daniil's opponent has built a double factory to try to outpace them in numbers. And Railgun Cruiser coming in here right off the bat, two and a half minutes before that's done. But given the numbers here, I mean, honestly, this could just go back. They really could go back here and tear apart this factory once again. All these Excaliburs and the Crusader. Actually, is there a jammer among them? I think there is. Yes, there's, there's a blotter among them, which means that this probably won't be able to see them. Double check. Yes, probably. Hard to say. Probably won't be able to see them. I mean, like I said, the blotter does counter radar. However, not sure that's really the plan. I think it looks like Daniil is actually planning to just push out this Tabitha and hope for the best with that. Not quite sure why. And more Moho Mines coming in here with the Moho Engineer. That's working out pretty well, actually. So, let's double check Daniil's. Yeah, Daniil's metal right now, it's about 70 metal. 70 metal and 1,500 energy. That is... How much... How much metal is this pulling in, anyway? 6.2 metal each. Wow, okay, that is huge. Yeah, 6.2 metal, for each Moho Mine. Let's get more constructors on this Tabitha and it'll be done pretty quick. But I think what's, what Daniil is trying to do is build a bunch of Moho Mines around here, and then once they're done, pull everything back here and build up the Tabitha. Yeah, building Moho Mines everywhere. So probably these ones will go up to the Tabitha after this, one's, this Moho Mine's done. And from there, it'll be pretty quick. I just don't know why this Skybus hasn't been used to attack yet. And construction stuff over to the northwest. Having, I mean, there's some stuff to reclaim, but really not much. That raid that came up earlier, that that didn't go anywhere. And the fence constructor is very nearly done for Vanersha. Not sure if they're going to go for a Tabitha or a Nuke or whatever as well. We'll see. Railgun Cruiser very nearly finished. Ooh, shiny. Anyway, that's very nearly finished. Nice metal sheen. Uh, the rivets are a bit wrong, though. I gotta, gotta be honest, that, that's not the best construction I've ever seen. It's really bizarrely shaped plates. But it is shiny. I will give it that. It's most definitely shiny. And it is done. Well, the Conquistador is done. I can't get special information on it. Why can't I get special? Oh, there we go. Conquistador is done. Lots of railguns. 1,500 minimum, or 1,500 maximum range. Yeah, 1,500 range, basically. So we can outrange everything. Because remember, this Crusader, that 1500 is actually its flat cannon. The long cannon is 1300, 
Conquistador outranges that in the second shipyard coming up as well. Vanusha is really focused on this, despite being only a 30 medal compared to, you know, 80 some odd. And now at this point, at this point, we see Daniil is actually floating. But these Moho mines being built up, and once they're done, this Tabitha is going to be supercharged. And once that's done, and then it's going to be game. Could be a while though. Still being built up, slowly but surely. Only an hour and 15 minutes left. Hooray! We only have an hour and 15 minutes left of this game. Actually, more like five minutes probably in practice. Once the Moho Mine's done, there's enough metal and energy to actually power that at full construction speed. It'll be pretty insane. I'm just surprised the Skybus is not coming in there though. Maybe he's trying to. Maybe Daniil is trying to sync the Skybus up with the Tabitha's completion, but the Tabitha alone can basically kill this tower. Nothing is stopping it. This defense constructor building up a Moho Engineer, but not much else at the moment, and like I said, there's a three-fold difference in economy right now. Like, this is Vanusha's economy. 459 because because of reclaim, I guess, but basically 30. And this is Daniil's. This is from reclaim, but normally it's like... Actually, not. this isn't reclaim. That's actually the new Moho mines. Solid economy of 100. Yeah, they're... Okay, it's just rebuilding Moho mines on top of the existing mines. So yeah, this... It's pretty insane. So it's going to be probably about 10 minutes from here before this whole Moho mine construction thing is finally finished. And that does mean that's going to take a while, but I don't know. What, what is Daniil doing? I, I am starting to think, okay, why is Daniil taking so long? I mean, the top of the, yeah, that takes a while. I'll grant that. You need a lot of metal and energy to make that work. But you don't need that much. I mean, you do need it, but you can just put the... I think at this point, probably would have been faster just to put the stuff on here. <sighs> okay, well... Okay, apparently Polar thinks that Neil is being a total troll. Well, anyway, the people in Mumble Chat are starting to... <laughs> okay, well, anyway, the people in Mumble Chat... Cause I, I actually have... I have something... <laughs> Basically, I have a voice in my ear on Mumble that you guys can't hear because I don't see the point of actually putting it through. It's just for my own organizational purposes. And th they're pointing out that Daniil is probably doing this for me. He's probably trolling me because I don't like super long games. I don't... I, I'd like to actually have this done today. However, the Zeus are coming in, so Daniil not completely trolling. I think they might have been wrong. The Zeus are actually incoming. There are some Totofists trying to deal with that, but there aren't really enough. And the Freedom Fighters are dealing with it as best they can. Pushing in, and Daniil trying to push through while three... Three whole shipyards for Vanusha. This is insane. Three whole shipyards for Vanusha, because why not? Three shipyards, two air plants. On this map, that actually kind of makes sense. But really, at this point, Daniil has such an advantage. Daniil could have won this 20 minutes ago. Very easily could have won this 20 minutes ago. But didn't. And now the Railgun Cruiser is coming in, it's going to be able to deal a bit of damage. Actually, surprised it's not firing yet, but yeah, it is able to deal a bit of damage. The Zeus are still streaming through the land and tearing up what they can. Actually, streaming through the land from the north as well. This should finally seal it. I think the game is going to be over. I think the Zeus here are going to finish the job, and Daniil will finally win. I should point out that this... Okay, there we go. Vanusha throws in the towel. That is finally game. Only 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes isn't too bad. That's kind of what I expect for Nada. Yeah, I can totally see what people were talking about with the trolling thing. Although, admittedly, Daniil did finally decide to win. <sighs> okay, well, we're going on to the next game, which will be between... Well, probably Kmart and Daniil, actually. It'll be the... Winner's semi semifinals. I don't know how that works. Oh, no, this is the winner's finals, actually. So, I don't know, maybe we're waiting for the loser's finals? I'm not sure, but yeah, this is the winner's finals. So Kamara Daniel is the winner's finals. 
And then we have the loser semis, which are still kind of going on. I think Le Lego Man Common Player might still be going. Not totally sure. Let's see here. So we'll see what happens. It looks like it's going to be... Yeah, Lego Man and Common Player are currently in the middle of their game. Vanishan and Lifel are going to be playing pretty soon. Don't know if I'm going to commentate theirs or just do the Winner's Finals immediately. Because I kind of want to do Winner's Finals, Loser's Finals, and Grand Finals. Or at least Winner's Finals and Grand Finals because I don't know how long everything's going to take. We'll see though. Anyway, once that's all worked out, I will be back. But I think for the moment, I will just take a bit of a... Great.